Hello and welcome to today's edition of PM Express, the business edition. My name is Philip Nanfuri. Today we're having a very interesting conversation with the executive chairman and senior partner of AB David in Africa, right here in Accra, Crystal Ball Africa 2019, where they'll be looking at threats and opportunities to businesses. In addition to that, they'll be making some predictions on the year's events. What are the major headwinds coming the way of businesses and how can businesses take advantage of this? At the forefront of all this, you would say, is the banking sector in Ghana. What does it hold for us? Yesterday, there was some news about one bank taking over the deposits and loans of another bank. Some called it a takeover, but one of them came out and said, no, it's an assumption agreement. There is no takeover here and there's no need for panic. These are some of the things that tend to shake businesses right here in Ghana. What about Africa? What about the global level? What's going to happen? On tonight's edition, we're going to be looking at how can businesses take advantage of the opportunities that present themselves disguised as threats? Because one would argue that it's not every bad thing that can affect a businesses. We can take advantage of these bad things and turn them into good things for us. So on today's PM Express Business Edition, we'll be speaking to Mr. David Opusudoti. He is the Executive Chairman and Senior Partner, AB David and Africa. So stay tuned. We have a very interesting conversation. And if we're lucky at the end, you give us some predictions on what might happen or what might change in the business landscape in the year 2019. My name again is Philip Nanfuri. Welcome back from the break. My name is Philip Nanfuri, and my guest is Mr. David Ofosu Dote. He's executive chairman and senior partner, AB and David Africa. They are legal consultants or lawyers for projects and businesses in Africa. And today, we'll be talking about the Crystal Ball 2019. And it's on the theme, Transforming with the Transformation. Very, very interesting theme, I might add. And he's going to explain to us what the Crystal Ball seeks to achieve. Uh, going through it, I saw they're going to uh, take on SMEs and help them. Uh, they're going to discuss threats to businesses in the year 2019 and the opportunities for businesses. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce my guest. And we're going to get the conversation Rolling. Mr. Dote, thank you very much for joining us here on PM Express. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Thank you, Philip. Okay, so Crystal Ball, uh, I, would, I would picture a woman sitting across the table, I sitting <laughs> from here. We're looking into the ball and she's telling me that, you know what, next year you're you are, you are going to get a Toyota Land Cruiser V8, big car, big house. That's, that sounds like a good one. That sounds like <laughs> a very, very good one. And uh, Crystal Ball has to do with predictions, future telling. What is your whole Crystal Ball 2019 Africa about? So Crystal Ball started uh, six years ago. This is the sixth run at a very small conference, uh, which we did purely for our clients, uh, because we realized over the period that our clients uh, complain about being shocked about events that happened that uh, they thought, and when I talk about our clients, I'm talking about Africa clients, okay. and, and especially multinationals operating in Africa. They get up one day and some law have changed. But this law, for example, was a bill in parliament uh, for, let's say, six months. Uh, why didn't they know? And these are complaints that uh, we, we had. And we thought that, look, if you put people around Africa, those who are investing around Africa together, and you made them know what is likely to happen the year ahead, uh, you know, businesses like yeah. to try on certainty. Yeah. It gives them an idea, and at least it, it weathers the storm, as it were, and uh, enables them to survive the bumps. And so, to plan. And to plan properly. That's how it started. So, yes, we do look into the crystal ball, but it's not prophecies. These are informed <laughs> predictions. Very informed like predictions, that. yes. And, and, and one of the, the entities we have just signed on to work with is an organization called Confidence. Okay. which is, among other things, a research-based organization. So we actually do research throughout the year, and we are able to make very informed predictions as to what will happen to business, uh, to changes in policy, even to uh, elections, uh, at times global events, and how these affect businesses. The key goal is to enable you right from the beginning of the year to factor these things into your strategy and see what to do with it. And it's grown to become a very, very well-attended conference, and people wait for these predictions. Okay, one would, one would argue that, you know what, um, year upon year we come up with these events, uh, guys gather in nice suits, uh, the big men come, they talk, they talk, they talk, and nothing is accomplished. Why is Crystal Ball 2019 different from all these other talk shops or these other events happening in town? So Crystal Ball is not a big man event, it's not a 
an event for policy makers to come and tell us what they will do, not at all. And, and that distinguishes us. It's a discussion of businessmen and policy makers right straight into their business on what exactly are you doing, what is going to happen from the policy perspective. And businesses, what is happening and what do you do about it? What can you do to prevent the bad, eff the, 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 I mean the, the bad effects and how can you take advantage? So it draws down to businesses. And every year we pick a particular sector to focus on on what we call a side event. And let okay. me let you into it. Yes, please. Each side event is christened the solutions looking for problems. And solutions looking, looking for, for problems, problems. yes. So we always have a solutions looking for problem center. This year we've upgraded the solutions looking for problems to a solutions looking for problems village. Okay. So this year is focusing on SMEs, that's the solutions looking for problem village. Okay. It's a part of the side, it's a side conference. Okay. It's looking at SMEs. SMEs who have challenges to deal with finance, to deal with taxation, to deal with even understanding how to file common returns to register general, etc. So there will be a business clinic for them. Okay. In addition, they are being given the chance to exhibit their products because there are people who are looking for these products and are not aware because SMEs don't have the wherewithal to advertise, etc. No. So they will be faced. You can come face to face with as many as 200 business executives who may be looking for their custom. In addition, some of these SMEs and startups have innovative solutions, especially in the fintech business and in the entire tech uh, uh, business. When, and some of these big businesses are looking for those solutions and they don't know that it exists. Okay. Then there are those with good ideas on financing and expansion who have not had a chance to meet one-on-one. -on -one. So you can actually, on the, at the exhibitions center and at the solutions looking for problem village, make a request and have a direct discussion with Philip and say, how can you promote my business? And the time will be booked for you. There's a booth allocated for it. Now, this year, uh, Crystal Ball Africa is being sponsored by uh, Barclays Bank, which okay. is a, mem a, a member of the Absa family. Yeah. And one of the things Barclays will be doing is having a booth to talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, all kinds of businesses, but especially SMEs uh, uh, also. Okay. Okay. So you have solutions right at the place. One innovation at the Solutions Looking for Problems uh, Village this year is to invest in Africa, who have a platform that enables businesses get access to bigger markets across Africa. Okay. And we are making this platform available for people who attend Crystal Ball. And this is one of the advantages. So it's really solutions which are actually looking for problems and not the other way around. If okay. you do have a problem, come right at the Crystal Ball and you, you do find the solutions. I think that should tell you that yeah. this is not a talk shop, this is not a, a, a policy perspective of what we will do. This is, the solution is right there and we are discussing it right there. And then we come into the main conference where we can touch on some of the things we'll be discussing and how it affects businesses and how okay. they can factor it into their strategy. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So from your submissions, I see that everything is tailored to actually focus on the business. On the business itself, itself. yes. Uh, you touch on SMEs, very critical to our economy. I think data shows that about 90% of businesses within our country are small, medium or, uh, small or medium enterprises. Um, with regards to threats, when I was going through your um, what the uh, crystal ball is about, I saw that um, the threats to businesses, it's, it's, it's something that you have said. Um, you start off the year, so many lofty goals, so many grand ideas, and then in the course of the year, something just shifts you off, off, your, off your path, if I can put it like that. I would, I, I, what comes to mind easily for me is the banking sector. And... It's, it's, it's where a lot of us play in terms of where we keep our funds. Some uh, people have families that work there, support their families. And we've seen that since 2017, the sector has been going down. Yes, the regulator will argue that it's strong, it's stable, but to the ordinary man, he doesn't see anything. I will consider that as the biggest threat to the economy right now, the banking sector. Will you agree with that assertion? Uh, yes, to some extent, okay. but, but, but no whole, not, not, not wholly. Uh, I think the banking sector is beginning to stabilize, if you ask me, and from the data that's available to, to, to me, it, did, it is stabilizing. There are going to be some very headwinds, I mean, uh, as we go along the line, especially for banks who have, who have not met their minimum capitalization, capitalization and those who stand the risk of being downgraded uh, if Bank of Ghana goes by that yeah. uh, ap ap approach. Uh, I'm not so sure whether any of them will lose their licenses uh, altogether. So, so that's, that may be the bad news, but for businesses, and I like to focus on businesses, what does this bad news mean? If, for example, you are saving or you are 
you, have, you are rather running your business with a, a bank which hasn't met its capitalization, or which hasn't got the wherewithal to be able to finance your transformation uh, as Africa transforms, then it becomes a threat. But I think in the banking sector, for businesses, to me, there, there's likely to be more good news in 2019. Because I expect interest rates to drop. Okay. Uh, that's that's perhaps the only prediction I will leak this year <laughs> until we come to and crystal seen, ball. And we've seen that um, <laughs> over the course of the year, it's been dropping marginally. Some argue it's still high. Some will argue that, okay, you know what, the Bank of Ghana's uh, interventions, for example, the Ghana reference rate, is going to take some time to kick in before we have the full effect of an interest rate drop to a level where people like me, the common man, can go and borrow. So, uh, yes, I would, I, would, I, I would say okay to that. And another... but, but, but not to cut you, okay, I think no one of the challenges about making predictions, which makes it business, which makes it different from prophecy, is that we are not, we are not hearing a voice, and okay. the voice is telling me to tell you something. We look at data. Okay. But one of the mistakes I noticed that people make is they seem to focus on just one event and expect that they can make a prediction from that event. Now, yes, the Ghana reference rate will take some time to to have the larger influence. But bank lending rate is dictated by just more than that. Yes. What is going to happen in the US, as an example, as a global event, is a significant, what a significant effect. So that's one threat <coughs> to a business. Well, it's not a threat. If you look at the global economy, the US economy is likely to slow down significantly. Okay. We pray it doesn't get into a recession. The Chinese economy will slow down. But any time those big economies slow down, there's rather a positive effect in Africa. Okay. Especially because we are not so much integrated into the global economy properly. And if you look at the last period, 2007, 2008, all the way to 2011, yeah. Yeah. when they had the so-called financial crisis, it was much easier to borrow here. Because monies which are not receiving the return on capital, they look for uh, uh, other sources of uh, uh, investments. And that Africa is one of the places. So this combination of events rather will benefit Africa, in okay. my view. Okay. And okay. interest rates are rather likely to drop. That's what I see. So there's a, a more likely positive effect on, on businesses in terms of the ability to have cost of capital dropping. Access to capital is a different question, and that, that, that's a separate issue that we will discuss at the Crystal Ball as well. Okay. Again, just on the banking, um, data from the Bank of Ghana show that um, the banks, as they are trying to avoid the high stock of non-performing loans are moving away from lending to investments in securities. And even if you check the data, uh, investments in shares, equities, has even dropped marginally. But you see that there's a preponderance of the funds going to investments in securities and less to lending, which means that, Mr. Dote, you and I, when we go to a bank, we'll not get money. Mm -hmm. the, for me, that's, that would be a major threat because I see that our businesses, more often than not, do a lot of debt financing mm -hmm. rather than equity financing. Mm -hmm. if, if you even go to a startup and you say, okay, you know what, let me contribute to your business. He says, no, he wants to do it all by himself. He rather go and borrow from a bank. I would say that's a big threat to businesses. It, it is, but that threat is not specific to 2019. It's more of a psyche issue regarding how businesses see their growth I mean, trajectory and where they want to own 100% of one instead of 10% of, uh, of, of, uh, of 100. I mean, that's a psyche issue. Okay. But there are alternative ways of financing which are available now. You have the Ghana Alternative uh, uh, in Index, you have private equity. In fact, one of the sessions at Crystal Ball is going to be a private equity session for okay. SMEs. There is Islamic Finance, and we bring in the president of the Islamic Finance Association uh, to Ghana. Remember, Crystal Ball is an Africa conference. It's, okay. a, it's, it's not just a Ghana conference. Yes, uh, yeah. So people are coming from all over Africa. Uh, at least we expect about 18 to 20 African countries uh, to be there. These are already registered uh, entities. So you, we are discussing it from an African perspective, Perfect. even though there will be a Ghana focus on the site as okay. one of the, the sessions. So these alternative ways of financing are gradually beginning to grow. In fact, Africa private equity rounds have begun to show some increase and a number of people are beginning to contribute to private equity rounds and capital raise for Africa businesses. So yes, the threat that you see is true to some extent because if the banks are investing in securities, that would mean that government is borrowing and maybe crowding out the private sector. Exactly. That's the only reason why the banks will do mm -hmm. that type of investment. But if I understand the policy direction very well, it seems there is likely to be less of that.
Okay. If I look at the sources of finance for the proposed infrastructure that the government is going to do in the 2019 the budget, the, do, the, the bonds, uh, money from China, and all those, they are not targeted at raising so much money on the, on the, on the, on the treasury bills yeah. market. And we've seen that the, that the rates on treasury bills have declined from about 2016. We saw and, and I expect it to continue. So, Since, so okay. in terms of cost of capital, it's likely to be less. But I've, remember, I've emphasized that this is different from access to capital. capital. Because the capital may be there. You may have uh, uh, banks who are now have from, I mean, 200 million to... Uh, or 250 million capital to 400 million. That means 122. Um, in, in some instances, some of them some were 250. Them, yeah. Some people have jumped from 120 to 400. So there is a lot of money that the banks have not no other option than to lend. Okay. Banks will be lending. In fact, smart banks have done something this year that or last year that last a lot year. of people didn't notice. They approach people to borrow money and locked in the percentage of interest at about 25 percent or thereabouts for a specific fixed period. These are smart banks because they know that the interest rate will drop. So, so yeah. So based on the on the decline, let me lock you in now. So I'm saying that I cannot, based on data, I find it difficult to see that interest rate won't drop. I believe they will drop unless something drastic happens, as uh, it happened. I think the last time we had such a drastic occasion was in February 2014, if I remember. Okay. So you, you, you made mention of a difference between the access to capital and cost of capital. Cost of capital. Quickly tell us what the access involves for businesses. So cost of capital is the rate at which, which you borrow. Yeah. But access to capital is whether or not you are qualified to borrow in the first place or whether or not you know where to find the capital. So that's, that's, that's the important part. So there are those who have not, for example, prepared their, their own accounts very well. So they go to the bank, they are looking for money to borrow. The bank asks you to bring your accounts, and you don't have the kind of accounts that will enable the bank to determine whether or not your business uh, plan is feasible, or you have a project, they don't know whether it's bankable. So that's access to capital. The cost may be low, but you may not have access to it. Let me describe it in that simple terms. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 and research has shown that this features predominantly with the SMEs, and you're going to have an SME clinic, if I can put it yeah. like that. Um, what, what, what goes into why they just can't get their books right? Because I'm sure if, if you're a business owner, you know that this is what you need. What are some of the reasons, from your experience, why businesses just can't get their books right? Is it a, a lack of appreciation for numbers? Is it the fact that they're not competent enough? What are some of the reasons that go into the, this? There are a number of factors. First, I think the regulatory framework for SMEs and startups is just too complex for them. I think we must realize that we live within a particular context and we can simplify some of these rules for them. I mean, if I was starting a carpentry shop and I have to have two directors and I have to file an annual return, and it makes it a bit complex. So you see that a lot of people gravitate towards sole proprietorship. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have that huge number yeah. of, of so-called informal sector businesses that we may need to find a way of formalizing. Yeah. I mean, for us to be able to, to I mean, uh, go beyond aid as it were and, and step up in our growth. So these number of factors all contribute uh, uh, to, to, to that. But having said that, what the business clinic is supposed to do during the crystal ball, again, this is happening at the Solutions Looking for Problems Village, okay. is to get participants to understand how to do it, tell them who can even help them do it. So there will be accountants who are attending, there will be Invest in Africa who have a platform that help them do these things. There will be Barclays Bank, a member of the Absa family, which will be helping them on how to find SMEs financing, how to qualify for this. Okay. There will be the Islamic finance uh, uh, person. Okay. Uh, there will be a private equity person who specializes in providing finance for SMEs. These give people that necessary push to okay. be able to access capital. Okay, okay. We're taking a quick break. When we get back, we'll get into the conversation. This is PM Express Business Edition. My name is Philip Namfuri, and my guest, David Ofusu Doti, Executive Chairman and Senior Partner, AB David in Africa. You're welcome back from the break. This is PM Express Business Edition. And my guest here, Mr. David Ofusu Doti, Executive Chairman and Senior Partner, AB and David Africa. We've been discussing Crystal Ball 2019, Crystal Ball Africa. 2019, uh, transforming with the transformation, an event where we're going to look at how businesses can take opportunities in the threats that exist in the coming year. Like he said, uh, he's not going to prophesy. He's going to give facts, he's going to give data. And this event is going to be driven towards businesses 
not another talk shop where we all gather with our nice suits and talk about nothing. It's going to drill down to businesses and how they can take advantage of what's going on in the country or even on the global level or even from Africa and even globally. We've looked at the banking sector in Ghana because that's what's really hot right on everybody's minds. Last year, it dominated a lot. We looked at interest rates and how they even affect businesses. It gave some examples of how businesses can look for alternative sources of financing. It's not only the bank that can give you money. You can have the Ghana Alternative Exchange. You can look at private equity. You can look at Islamic finance. And that's a new thing if you're looking at our Ghanaian economy. So all these will be at Crystal Ball Africa 2019. It's happening next week on the 9th of January to the 10th of January at the Labadi Beach Hotel here in Accra. So we're going to continue our conversation. Uh, we're going to look at just a few more threats. Uh, what's happening in America? We hear there's a slowdown in China. Is it going to affect us? We saw that uh, when China moved from, moved from primary to manufacturing and into services, we saw a drop in our demand for our commodities, uh, such as gold, such as cocoa. Now we're seeing a company like Apple cut back its uh, growth projections because of a slowdown in China. Should we worry about Donald Trump and what's happening in America? What's happening in Europe? Uh, Brexit. Do we have any concerns in Africa and even in Ghana? So we're going to continue the threats and how businesses can tap into this to transform it, like the theme said, transforming with the transformation. Then we'll look at the opportunities that's, that exist in Africa and Ghana for businesses. So Mr. Dotti, thank you very much for staying with us. To the threats, I want us to just summarize on that, then we look at the opportunities. The US, key player in the world economy. We've seen Donald Trump's rhetoric here and there. We look at Europe, we've seen what's happening with uh, the UK and Brexit. Uh, we look at even other countries within Europe, and some will argue populist movements, etc. Then we come down to Africa, uh, e.g. We are trying to put together the Continental Free Trade Agreement. I'll use that as an example. How do we tap into this? as businesses in the African region. Someone, someone might argue that, you know what, it's going to open up the markets for everyone where we can buy and sell easily, like we have with the EU block. Some will say, no, that's a bad thing. Our businesses in Ghana here, for example, are not that competitive. What's your take on this? So, so as a general principle, uh, Philip, every, everything that happens in life is either good or bad, depending on how you look at it and how you're able to leverage on it and how you're able to manage that event. So if you're starting with the AFCT, the, C, the Continental Free Trade Agreement, incidentally that was the theme for last year's Crystal okay. Ball. Uh, and the Continental Free Trade Agreement was signed, as you know, in March in, yeah. in, 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 in Rwanda. Eight countries signed at that time, uh, or, or no, about 44 countries signed, not eight. But eight countries ratified it subsequently. As of today, about 13 countries by my count have now ratified. The target is to achieve 22 countries ratifying by March and this year in order for it to kick. I mean, uh, and now that's the only session at the Crystal Ball where we will have a policy maker. <laughs> and, and the question to the policy maker is very simple. Give us an update and where we are and when do we expect it to kick in. It's as simple as that. Because businesses already will be having a discussion there on what opportunities are. You have a 3.5 trillion potential economy to be created. Intra-African trade has already gone up to about 15 to 16% already as I speak. So with or without CFTA, intra-African trade is incre increasing. But just as an opportunity, it comes with a threat. If you have Ethiopia doing its uh, 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 train connection to Djibouti, mm -hmm. and Ethiopia settling its uh, 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 conflict with Eritrea, it may sound like news if you watch CNN or BBC. But what does that mean? Ethiopia, as we speak today, is becoming the new China, for want of a better word. It's the new factory yeah. of Africa where goods are being manufactured. So if you take simple things like manufacturing of shoes, which happens a lot in Ghana, I wear only made in Ghana shoes. Wow. What will happen if Ethiopian shoes, after the 22 uh, number of countries are rich, and Ethiopian shoes start flooding the market? Can the Ghanaian shoemaker survive right. that competition? But can the Ghanaian shoemaker also take advantage of that and start exporting and looking at Africa? So you will see that rec recognizing this event, we have a session there on overcoming the challenges of expanding across Africa. 
and how SMEs can take advantage of it. And we bring the experts who have done it before and people who have stories to tell uh, on this. A couple of them from your uh, uh, Joy Business Van are going to be there to tell their stories on how they made it into, uh, into Africa. So from that angle, you will be looking at both threats and opportunities. But what happens is most people always focus on the big news. China, US war, Donald Trump, Brexit. But what does Brexit mean to the African business? Yeah. So we will have a Brexit session, okay. but it's not a typical Brexit session. There are two speakers, one from Germany, who is speaking on Africa trade with Europe post-Brexit. That is, if Brexit does happen. Okay. The other is from UK, who is speaking on UK-Africa trade post-Brexit. What, what will UK, UK be focusing on? You will notice that the foreign minister or foreign secretary has gone to Singapore, trying to look at the Singapore model. I'm talking about the foreign secretary of UK. Of UK, yeah. What is UK doing? Why was Prince Charles here? What is, are the moves UK is doing that may affect how they treat with the world because they anticipate Brexit? And this is what our businesses need to know. That you won't hear on the CNN yeah, because sure. CNN will be telling you about uh, what is happening to China and the big economies. But what about the African economy? These things do affect us. And that's the, the difference with pro other programs and Crystal Ball. We'll bring the people here and we talk about Africa and what it means to you and what you can do. And that's going to happen right at Crystal Ball. Okay, so with regards to opportunities, um, when I look around me, um, I would say there's not much we can tap into. Maybe I'm looking at it from a myopic point of view. But I want to argue that no, there's a lot we can do or we can tap into. Tying this to Crystal Ball, what opportunities are out there for businesses? In this year so there are a number of them so so we look at them in sectors so for example we will have a sector looking at agribusiness and its relationship to industrialization and adding it to free zones okay and special economic zones so we will have free zones there and agribusiness experts so we are looking at the value addition chain how do you move from the ordinary product to a product that has higher value and there are a number of solutions that people are i mean uh, uh, have out there and that the market need to hear of and opportunities that can be taken advantage of. We'll be having a session on African hotspots. It's always a, a very, I mean, a, a topic people look after. Where is the investment going? And this is very intriguing because very often you hear these are the six fastest growing economies yes. in Africa, etc. Rwanda, etc. Yes. But we have a research team that actually, and the, yes, the last year's presentation was very interesting where it shows you where investors actually start their business whilst looking at the bigger markets. And I'll give you an example. Nigeria is going to have an election in April. Mm -hmm. A lot of investors are shying away from Nigeria. And we'll be making a prediction as to who will win the Nigerian election <laughs> and what it means to business anyway. But you have to wait for Crystal Ball to oh, hear that I prediction. Will. <laughs> yeah. So I investors are shying away. But whilst they are shying away, where are they actually investing? And we give you that and the numbers, the amount of money that they have invested in. We tell you from African budgets around Africa, which government is putting what money into what sector and why you must look at that sector. So there will be that session on African hotspots. There will be a session looking at Ghana, Nigeria, Uganda, as the new oil economies and the local content opportunities and what to watch. So we'll be having the Petroleum Commission there telling us about the local content opportunities. But the rest of the people are businessmen. There's a Ugandan businessman in the oil sector coming okay. who has uh, uh, investing in the, in the oil and gas sector in Uganda. We have somebody coming from Minerals Commission to speak at Nigeria's solid minerals and Ghana's solid minerals. And what are the opportunities there post uh, uh, Galamse? What are the real opportunities with yeah, the new? Sure. And, and what are some of the middle roads that persons who are not in mining can take advantage of. These you don't hear in the news. These are the real things that businesses can make money from. And that's one of the sessions that we'll be having uh, uh, as well. Then of course, uh, uh, there is one thing which is very important. Everybody who attends Crystal Ball waits for the last session, which is the predictions okay. on what will happen and what to look out for. So these predictions, we pick anything between six and 12. And it's based on data. Our most famous prediction was about Mugabe, where we actually predicted in 2017 that we did not expect Mugabe to go beyond 2018 as a president. <laughs> yes, I mean, this was done in public. And it came to pass. And it came to pass by November that Mugabe, uh, and people were asking, uh, what did you know that we didn't know? It's based on data. So this, this data, we show, for example, we've already predicted that, we, and we predicted this way back early last year, that there are only two results, possible results of Brexit. Either there will be 
so-called Brexit, no deal Brexit, or there will be no Brexit, okay. which means that there will be a second referendum and there will be no Brexit, only one of the two. Isn't that very messy? So, <laughs> yeah, but, but don't bother planning for too many things. I mean, I address a certain uh, multinational boardroom yeah. and I gave them this prediction long ago and it's already beginning to happen that these are going to be only one of the two. two Data drives that. It tells you that. Yeah. So these events, global as they may look, we will look at this impact on Africa and opportunity, and then we now look at Africa events. We are going to look at up to about 15 elections which are happening on the continent. A lot of people don't realize that. One election was just finished in Cameroon, yeah. and we are bringing somebody from Cameroon who will be talking about post-election post opportunities in Cameroon with Paul Bia still in charge after mm -hmm. starting his seventh term. These are all <laughs> things that we will be looking at, and what Ghanaian businesses can benefit from working in Cameroon, as an example. So I see... I see that at the heart of this is research, is data, is solid numbers. I look at our businesses here, Mr. Dorte, and it's, 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 you would argue, or one would argue that, you know what, the businesses in Ghana here, particularly small businesses, some would even argue that even big businesses don't plan based on evidence, based on scientific data, based on numbers, based mm -hmm. on research. Would you agree with certain assertion that businesses in Ghana generally, not specific, generally don't really plan with this type of data that you are using to predict events that are happening in the year or years past or in the coming year? I, I think the answer is yes, but to some extent. And not to the extent that researchers do not make this data available to them and what it means. One of the criticisms I have about our academia is they do a lot of research, mm -hmm. but the research remains academic. Uh, these days, you have a few of them trying to talk business, etc. There is an academic part of it for the classroom. But businesses need this data. Yeah. And they, in, they need the data to be presented to them in easy-to-use basis okay. and explain to them why. So they make the decisions. You can't make the decisions for businesses. And that's what Crystal Ball does. It presents you with the fact. So, for example, one of our popular sessions is what we call the country focus. And the country focus is always divided into two. There's the Ghana focus, and this year the Ghana focus is going to be on the taxation elements of the 2019 budget and opportunities in the 2019 budget. Okay. So that's held as a breakout session. The rest of the session picks certain specific countries, and this year we are picking Cameroon, Liberia, Uganda. Uh, we are picking Uganda because of it's becoming an oil economy. We are picking Nigeria, uh, what will happen uh, after, after, after the election, mm -hmm. uh, depending on who wins. And you see a very simple data already that Nigeria has dropped its budget by up to about $2 billion. Why did Buhari do that? Why is the 2019 budget in Nigeria less than what it predicted? How does that affect infrastructure? And what infrastructure is going to happen in Nigeria that will prevent you from exporting to Nigeria or rather lead Nigerian exports here? These are things you need to know. Based on that, businesses can make their own strategy. We don't make a strategy for them. For them. Yeah. Okay. I would, I would, I would, I would say that's, that's, a, that's a key and a relevant point because in my engagement sometimes um, sometimes you look at decisions businesses have taken and you realize that there's nothing uninformed yes nothing yeah. really back in it and you as a consumer or as a customer of that business you sit back and you ask yourself that okay so what 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 went into this decision that they've taken and it seems to bring a whole backlash uh, after it's taken even on the, on the national level, uh, you talk about tax. And in the 2017 mid-year, we saw the introduction of the 35% for 10,000, the mm -hmm. income ban. And we've seen in the 2019 budget, they've gone back on this and made it 25% for 20,000 mm -hmm. and above. Such um, decisions, not, not, not to throw shade at government whatsoever, they, they seem not to have the necessary research or the necessary focus backing them. Some would argue that these are political... Not, not to cut you fully, but, yeah. but I disagree on that point. Okay. I think, and, and again, that is why I always tell the media whenever I've had the occasion to speak, that you should do more business discussions and less politics. So if you understand, let me, let me focus just Please. on Ghana for a bit. If you understand how the Ghana budget cycle goes, you don't have to be surprised as a business for it. Because the budget hearings are done by all the MDAs and the MMDAs by September. So the budget for 2020 will have been concluded, quote-unquote, by September this year. The, the constitution requires the budget to be presented, and the government have over the years done it in November. 
But when they finish their presentations to the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Finance now sits down, collates it, look at how it face government policy, make adjustments here and there. That is the budget policy statement that you see read on the floor. But a good business must anticipate what the so-called MDAs and MMDAs have presented as budget okay. proposals by September. Additionally, you should be able to influence it so that it that influencing it will shape it in the direction of business if you can't influence it you should be able to anticipate it so if you had an insight you will know that this policy was likely to come and that is the kind of thing that you need to know then you can plan against it because you know okay now it means that 30 percent of your budget of those who are getting 20,000 and above mm -hmm. is now has to be catered for in this way or government is going to spend 600 million dollars on infrastructure but when you hear that in the budget, what the politicians will tell you, ah, this is Wahala budget. Another one will say, <laughs> this is a... Another, they, you know, they yeah, find all names. kinds of yeah. names for it and they make noise. That's fine. But that shouldn't last more than a day. Where exactly is that money going to be spent? Yeah. And in what sector? How do you position yourself to either take advantage of it or if you can't take advantage of it because you are not in the business of bidding for contracts, how do you anticipate that if this is going to be done, if, let's say if a road project is going to be done, that means if you are a doctor citing a hospital here, you must time how to cite the hospital. Or if you are a supermarket, when do you decide that your project should take place? These are the real things we tell businesses because they make decisions based on lack of information because they are listening to somebody saying this is a, giving some fancy name to the to the budget. But it goes beyond that. Important to budget. Important to budget. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. so, so that's that's what crystal ball that we look into the crystal ball we go beyond the big news and we let you see exactly what you ought to be looking at and not just the general news so mr Dotti, um before we wrap up um crystal board africa 2019 we're going to look at how businesses are going to benefit from the opportunities that exist and missed all the confusion in the economy not only in Ghana, like you said, Africa and globally, how Africa as a whole can tap into this. When we come back from the break, I want you to tell us what businesses should look out for, without predicting, should look out for this year, 2019. We've had a lot of issues from the past year, 2018. So what you should look out for, where we should arm ourselves, where we should let ourselves loose, and where we should increase our spending or take advantage of. So when we come up with a break, you just do that for me and then we'll wrap up. This is PM Express Business Edition. My name is Philip Nanfuri and my guest, David Ofusu Dote, Executive Chairman and Senior Partner, AB and David Africa. You're welcome back from the break. This is PM Express Business Edition. My name is Philip Nanfuri and my guest, David Ofusu Dote, Executive Chairman and Senior Partner, AB David and Africa. We're just at the tail end of, of, of our conversation, and he's going to tell us by looking into his crystal ball, which I can't see anywhere around him, but uh, he claims to have all the predictions up here. We're going to just tell us, tell businesses what exactly you're looking out for. He's not going to give us the predictions for this year. He says he's going to stay clear of it. Uh, I'm sad about it, but there's nothing I can really do about it. I might push him, but he might not say much. So we're going to just look at the, the year ahead, outlook, basically. We've we started the year obviously with banking. Bank of Ghana has been trending the whole of last year and I think it's unfair that this year they should trend also, but that's not up to you or I. We will look at other things, uh, taxation for businesses in the year ahead and SMEs. What's the outlook for all these things? Then our conversation will come to an end. So Mr. Dote, you don't want to give us a lot of predictions. It, well, I've already given you one. Yes, you've given me one. <laughs> <laughs> Which has to do with interest rates, if yes, you're talking about very good. Uh, Ghana. Uh, but there are a number of them, and like I said, we always speak between 6 and 12, yeah. which we guard jealously and we keep updating the data, even up to the very last minute. Okay. So it's always the last presentation. But one of the things you could be looking out for would be one of the biggest measures worldwide is going to happen this year. Uh, I won't mention the likely uh, oh. firms, yeah. <laughs> so they are going to be quite big measures. Give us uh, the industry. Uh, more IT, okay. likely. Okay. Uh, okay. So it's going to be either a measure or a flotation, an IPO. Okay. And it's going to be quite big. Okay. So, okay. so 
so, so, so look out uh, for that. Mm -hmm. More likely, I, I, IT. Mm -hmm. The measures are likely to happen in the finance sector. Okay. And it's going to be blo uh, global, at the global level, not, okay. not at the Ghana level. Uh, so do you need to look out for that? And we are seeing it already in Saudi Arabia. You've seen that. Well, I, I wouldn't want to go into that because okay. we are going to be very precise during the, <laughs> the, the, the prediction stage. Okay. It, it's also one thing which is of interest. Britain's trouble is going to be more than Brexit. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be more than Brexit. I wouldn't tell you. You want to give us some light yeah. on that? Uh... The point is, apart from its economy dipping, it is likely to be overtaken from an unexpected angle. Uh, and that particular prediction shows the specific country businesses to be looking at. And it's not China, for your information, because already China is the second largest economy mm, in the yeah. world. So Britain is going to have another trouble besides Brexit that it has to deal with. And it will have trouble whether or not Brexit does happen. Okay. But I'm interested in the extent to which that affects African businesses and the country they ought to be looking at and why. Uh, and, and, and that's uh, one of the things we... Oil is an interesting mm -hmm. sector. Because the number of African countries are becoming oil economies. Uh, even Zambia has just intensified this exploration. Uh, Kenya is going to start exporting oil. So Kenya, Uganda coming on as oil economies, Liberia. The number of oil economies are increasing. And they are all attempting local content uh, implementation. One country, for example, is going to be implementing a 48% local content. And that is a country to look at. Okay. Uh, so these are things that we ought to be paying uh, attention to. In respect of Ghana, uh, I would rather keep it until oh, you attend the so Something small just for us. I, 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 the, the, the one on interest rates is, 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 is enough. That's the only one. <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> it, 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 it's enough for that for now, so that you attend Crystal uh, <laughs> Because Because Ghana, some, one will say, okay, you know what, banking industry is one. Uh, we are going to see some moves in the insurance industry. We saw last year that the uh, Security and Exchange Commission has started some active moves in the capital markets. Also, we see that um, the pension funds also. There were some reports during the last year that some were a bit shaky, if I can put it like that. But uh, if, if, if the other thing you ought to be looking at, which relates to finance, uh, because you are pushing me and because yeah, you are talking yeah, about finance, yeah. Is the possibility of a very major intervention from the Minister of Finance on the financial sector, which is not banking. Okay. Uh, okay. So don't, don't look at banking. Uh, 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 the likelihood of a major policy that may change the dynamics of the, of, 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 of the banking sector. Of but the banking in, sector? It, of the financial sector. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, of the financial sector. You just sector. gave it to me. No, didn't. no, no. no. Oh, okay. I, I didn't say banking. Sure. I, I meant financial yeah, sector. sector. Okay. I made a mistake okay. by saying okay. financial sector. Okay. Now, having said that, having said that, Everything depends on two things. The timing on when that is done. Okay. Because timing is everything. So, for example, and, and these are some of the things that, uh, as an advisor to businesses, I look at. If, for example, you have a major policy to implement and you don't do it before, let's say, May, and Nigeria finishes election and Nigeria does the same thing, Ghana becomes history. Okay. Because the size of Nigeria's economy then affects the success of your policy. Because remember, he who is first in mind controls the customer. That's the reason for the so-called uh, uh, first mover advantage. So you may have the policy, but timing also affects, I mean, its effect. So it's something that you can uh, look out for. What else can I say about uh, Ghana, which I'm ready to leak uh, for now? <laughs> Let's wait for night and tent. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, so Crystal Ball is happening um, 9th January. To 10 January. Yes. Uh, Labadi Beach. Labadi Beach. So the, the, the exhibition starts on 9 January okay. in the morning. And uh, I, I think it's important to emphasize, I've mentioned that of Barclays, a member of the ABSA family as yeah. a main sponsor. But we do this in association with the Association of Ghana Industries. Okay. In confidence, yes. Uh, and also this year, Invest in Africa is joining us as, as part of the, and we always have Tropical Cable and uh, Rendeva, our usual, uh, Rendeva, the developers of Apollonia. These are our usual. Uh, 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 partners. So the exhibition and the solutions looking for problems village starts from the morning on the 9th. At what time? 9 a.m. Okay. It's, it's open throughout up to 5 p.m. Okay. Then we have a welcome cocktail at 5 p.m. But at 3 p.m. that day, we start the session on preparing SMEs for the transformation. Okay. So that's a major session where there will be a, 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 that's where the conference opens and focusing on SMEs. Then we do a session on transfer pricing. 
Transfer pricing has become a very major uh, uh, issue because mm -hmm. of the OECD rules on transfer yeah. pricing. And multinationals are concerned about it. What's happening to transfer pricing in Ghana and, uh, and, and Africa? Those are the two sessions for that day. The rest of the sessions on every other thing I've talked about happens on day two. And the last session is the real predictions, predictions yes, yes. Where, where we drill down. On what Do you have an exact time issue. that you start that session? Normally it starts at 5 p.m. Okay. And ends at 5.30, and then we have uh, a, a real party. So it ends with a party, actually. Okay. Uh, Chris Abwal always ends with a party. We call it a closing party. So there's a live band, there is food and drinks, etc. Uh, at the end of it. So it's a must attend. It is a must, a must attend. attend. Okay. If, if, if you want to really have a good strategy for 2019, it is a must attend. And, and as we say, your 2019 business strategy is not complete if you have not attended Chris Abwal. Okay. So you've heard it from the horse's own mouth. Mr. David Opusudote, Executive Chairman and Senior Partner, AB David and Africa. Crystal Ball Africa 2019, next week, 9 to 10 to January 2018 at the Labadi Beach Hotel. 2019. 2019, <laughs> yes. I beg your pardon, at the Labadi Beach Hotel. I'm a bit stuck in last year. So it's a very important event. We're going to delve into businesses, the threats, opportunities, and how we can take advantage of all this in this year, 2019. This has been PM Express Business Edition. My name is Philip Nanfuri, and my guest, Mr. David Ofusudote, Executive Chairman and Senior Partner, AB David in Africa. Mr. Dote, thank you very much thank you. for your time.